in there. This is the um, video that shows you how to make a little gauge swatch so that you can um, check your gauge before we start our crochet along for the Bernat crochet vest. It's a bamboo crochet vest. We're using Bernat bamboo yarn and I showed you in the last video how to get to the pattern and how to get to the forum so that you can join in our discussion for the crochet along. So right now what I want to do is show you how to make the little gauge swatch that you need to get started. So first just um, find the center of your skein of yarn and the way I do that I'll get another skein so I can show you. If you look at your skein you'll see that um, there's an there's one end here and there's one end here. So what I like to do is I like to feel around inside the skein and find a section that's um, loose. And when you start sticking your fingers in you'll start to notice that one section is sticking out here from the center. See that's coming from the center? Pull that out because that is the outside we don't want to use that and if you pull that out first it'll help to um, keep it from tangling up with the rest of your yarn so I wrap that around the skein and I stick it under the label to get it out of the way just like that and then that came out of this side so now I want to pull the center from this other end so I just kind of wiggle around I put my fingers in from both ends and I wiggle around and um, you can start to feel a little loose section in there and that's what you want. So you just start to pull that out and it might bring out a whole bunch at first and that's okay. Bring out all that stuff from the inside and then set your skein aside and then pull all that, that, that big part that came out from the middle and you'll be able to find the center of your skein in there. And then what I do is I get the part that came out and I stick it on top of the, the skein over there. And then when I find the end, which is right here, I leave it hanging so that I can get to it later. So that is the center of the skein. So that's the way to find the center. And I've already done that with this other skein. These skeins are small, so um, there's not a whole lot of yarn to worry about with them. So now that you have the center of the skein, um, you need to make a little swatch. And um, back when I first started learning to crochet, I um, used a um, CD which helped me to understand how to cast on and how to do all the different stitches. Well, not cast on, you know what I mean. And and I made this little um, um, little spreadsheet that shows me what I need to do in order to get 11 stitches with each of the different stitches. So I will download this onto the forum so that you can read it, but um, it does help me whenever I'm making gauge swatches. So in order for me to get 11 stitches in double crochet, because this um, pattern says that you need to have 11 double crochets for every 4 inches. In order for me to do it in double crochet, I need to check Pardon me, I need to chain 13 to start with. So, I actually want to do more than 11. I want to do two more than 11, so I'm going to chain two more than that. I'm going to chain 15. So, to make your chain, I think I'm going to shut down my computer now. Let me do that so I can have a little bit more room to work because I'm kind of constricted maneuvering around this computer. Shut it down. <clears throat> In fact, I'm gonna let it run a little, a little virus scan. I'm gonna set my computer aside so that it's out of the way. So let me get that done real quick. I did want to show you that little spreadsheet though, so that you would see what I was talking about. 
like that little spreadsheet. It helps me to get stuff um, arranged and planned in my head for all of my crochet projects. Okay, so now we have a little clean space here to work. And I'm going to um, cast on, I mean, chain 15. So I haven't chained any yet. I just did my little knot. So I'm going to do that again. So for those of you who are just learning to crochet, you make your little slip knot. You just wrap it around, make a little X. See, I made a little X right there. And then um, you take your finger out and it looks like a little pretzel. So you pick up this strand that's in the center of the circle and you lock it on to your hook that way. So it takes practice to be able to do that but you can find other videos about that on how to make a slip knot. And then you need to hold your yarn and start chaining. Now when you work with this bamboo yarn you don't want to hold the yarn too tight because um, the way this yarn is constructed it has these fluffy fibers and it also has a th some threads that help to bind it together. Um, I'm assuming, I might not be right about this, but I'm assuming that the fluffy fibers are the bamboo and the little thread that's run through with it is the acrylic and polyester that they're talking about on the fiber content. So in order to keep it all together and fluffy and nice like it is, don't pull it tight because if you pull it tight it's going to pull this construction apart so just let it sit in your hands as you work on it so I hold it real gently right here and then I wrap my hook and I pull it through real gentle so that was one chain now I need two and every time I, I make a, a little chain I leave um, you see how big around the hook is? You want the circle that you just made, the chain that you just made, to stay the size that it was when it was wrapped around the thickest part of your hook right here. So when you pull your loop through, don't let it tighten up that chain that you made before because these chains need to stay big just like they are. That's the reason why you use different size crochet hooks so that your little chains and your stitches will be the size that your hook was when you made them. So don't tighten up those chains. So, so far I've made three chains. I need four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, can. So can you see how the yarn is just flowing in my fingers like that? It's not tight. 12, 13, 14, 15. There. So now these chains are nice and loose and that's the way you want them to be. A lot of people will chain really tight and what that does is, um, especially if this is the bottom of your garment, what that does is it makes the bottom real tight and then all the rest of the stitches are nice and loose. So to start off your project, make your chain loose. So now for my um, 12 stitch sample, I need to, um, I mean 11 stitch sample, I need to wrap it one time to make a double crochet and then I skip to the fourth chain. So I don't count the the loop that's on my hook. I count the loops here below my hook. So there's one, two, three, four. Right there is where I need to go in to start my double crochet row. And there's my first double crochet. And there's another double crochet. So you always wrap one time. And then 
if you look at your um, chains you can see where I've gone down into the next circle so now I don't go into the same circle I went in before I need to go to the next circle so always go to the next circle for your next stitch sometimes um, you'll work into the same circle twice by accident and what this does is it makes an extra stitch and you don't want that you want to have the exact same number of stitches on every row and you'll notice that I'm working just under one strand on this first row that's just the way I like to work some people will work under two strands for the first row but I like to work under just one for the first row I guess it's just a matter of personal preference to each his own. My computer is making funny sounds. I might have to look over there and see what's going on. What's up with that? Crazy computers. <sighs> and there's the last one. So I should have 14 stitches on this if I counted right. Because I could have lost my count the way I was um, talking and chaining at the same time. So I'm going to pull that last loop real big so I don't lose it. And I'm going to count how many I have here. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Hmm. Oh well, I was wrong. But 12, is, 12 will work because I want to be able to measure what 11 stitches will look like. So I must have not done enough or done a few extra or something like that. Now at the end of your double crochet row, you just turn it around like this. See, it was like this when I finished. So now you just flip it over, just like this. And now I need to chain three. So I'll go one, two, three. And then at the beginning of your next row, you don't work into this chain, this stitch, because that's the, that is your three chains up here. That's the beginning of your second row. So you don't work in the same hole. You need to go to the next hole for a double crochet. Just like that. And it looks like you've got a big gap, but trust me, it's right. So remember we had 12 double crochets on that first row, didn't we? So we should have 12 double crochets on this row. <coughs> and as you work, keep reminding yourself to keep the yarn loose. And, um, and what I do is I let it hang loose like this. If you're if you're working straight from the skein, sometimes it'll start to get tight, and if your yarn is tight, then it'll make your stitches tight. So keep it nice and loose and flowing as you work. That's the best way to work with this bamboo yarn. It um, makes it keep its um, integrity of the yarn, and it also makes it stay nice and soft and smushy. So we're almost at the end. I've got a little funny section there, so I'm going to pull that loose. There we go. Now here, at the very end, you work into that last little loop. And then you're done. So now we should count the stitches on this row. One, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. There. So now I know I need to do one more. Twelve. And this will be in the top of the chains that we worked before. Remember how we did those chains earlier when we first started and we did 15 or 14. I might have miscounted there. So now we're at the end of that row. And then when you turn it, it's starting to look straight. So here we do three chains again. One, two, three. We wrap it. We don't go in the first chain. We go in the second chain. I mean stitch. I keep saying chain. It's the stitch. And the way you can find the next stitch is if you stretch it out a little bit, you'll look and you'll see these little holes at the top. That's where you should be sticking in the, the hook for each stitch. And it's going to feel like they're really far apart, but it's because we're working with a J hook. If you work with a smaller hook, they won't feel so far apart. After a while, you just start to feel where the hook should go as you work. It's just something that comes with practice. I've been crocheting, hmm, let me think here. I started knitting, I can't even remember right now. <laughs> but it's not been that long. So here I am at the end. And see we have that curvy thing? So we need to work into the top of that, um, those chains for the last stitch. There. So now let's count those. Let's make sure we have 12. So I'm going to pull that last loop real big. So it makes it easier to count. One, two, three, four. 9, 10, 11, 12. Yay! So now I've got 12 stitches in every row. Time for another row. And the way I do when I pull my hook loose, I'll, I'll tighten it like this and it helps me see which end was coming out. And then I turn three chains. One, two, three. And it's always remind yourself to keep it loose. So that first three chains counted as your first stitch. That's two now. Three. So now we can count as we go. Four. Five. Pull that yarn out so it doesn't get tight. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Several rows done. Turn it around again. I think this will be the last one I need to do. Three. Second row. So now I can start going quick. So see when it starts getting tight like that, you need to pull the yarn out from the skein so that you have some to work with. Because you don't want it to be tight coming from the skein as you work. That's what causes it to get too tight in your work. I love this yarn. It feels wonderful. I can't wait to wear this vest. It's going to be so nice.
and um, Burnett Bamboo yarn is really the only yarn that will work for this pattern. It's a bulky yarn. You might be able to find yarn in a different brand, but um, you want to be careful not just to match the weight because this bamboo yarn is very lightweight. Um, if you get another bulky yarn, it might be heavy and it wouldn't work well with this project. This is a lightweight yarn and it's real um, fluffy and soft. So um, it might help if you if you can't get the Burnett bamboo yarn, um, if you can um, try to find one skein somewhere that a friend has or or if they don't have enough skeins of your color at the store you can look at one skein and feel it and try to match it but your project will turn out best if you use Burnett bamboo yarn let's count those and make sure we did it right one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, yay this will be the last row I think You know me, I always take my time with projects. I'm not in a hurry. I like I love to start new projects. It takes me a long time to finish them though. But that's alright. I like to keep my creativity going. If I um, limit myself and only work on one project at a time, I get bored. So I, I like to start several projects and then decide which one I want to work on that night. And that's why it takes me a while to make things. Because I have so many things going. <laughs> but sometimes I'll buckle down and say, I want to finish that one. So I'll, I'll concentrate on just that project for a while so that I can get it going. And then I finish it. What's so great about these videos is that you'll be able to come back later and remind yourself how to work these stitches. And I'll be able to remind myself too. There, that looks like a square now, doesn't it? One way you can check to see if it is a square is to fold one corner over to the other corner. And if it folds evenly, you know you've got a square. So now I'm just going to... Um, I'm not going to cut this because I don't want to lose this yarn. It's so precious. I'm just going to lay that down like that. Let me put my camera down. There's my swatch. And now I'm going to get a ruler. And I need to measure four inches. And I'm going to skip the first stitch because um, that's 12 stitches and I need 11. And it looks like I'm just right. I got four inches for 11 double crochets. So awesome. Yay. And now I'm going to measure the rows and see if I have four inches. Yes, I do. I have four inches. Awesome. So this is what I needed. I got my swatch done. My gauge is spot on. So now I can unravel this. And I will be able to use this yarn to start my project. I haven't lost any yarn at all. Now, if you are a stickler for details and you want to really check your gauge, you can um, cut that and weave in your yarn ends and wash it in the washing machine or something and put it through the, the the grind and see how it survives all the different kind of care options that you want to try. Now the label on the yarn for the care options says hmm, hand wash so we wouldn't want to wash it in the machine. Now sometimes what I will do even though it says hand wash I'll wash it in the gentle cycle in cold water and spin it in the in the washer to get as much moisture out as I can and then I, I lay it out flat to dry. So I do that myself for my machine. My machine has a gentle cycle that I can do that with. But um, the brunette label really 
um, specifies that you should hand wash it. So that's what I would do if you want to test this swatch. I would hand wash the swatch and lay it out to dry so that you can measure it again and see how it made it through your, your washing procedure. So that's how to make your swatch. I'll see you in the next video when we get started working on the project. Bye!